Craig next to P4. And I'm pretty sure both of you could have a few things to say. 241 points. Dennis Hauger, F3 champion coming into this year, following in the footsteps of an F3 champion of Oscar Piastri going to Prema. Jehan Daruvala, a guy reunited with Prema and looking to make his mark, ends up making his mark with P7 in the standings. Ahead of his teammate, though, um, kind of only just was not the season for Prema that I think anybody was expecting, Josh. This, yeah, P4 actually surprised me that they finished that high in the end. Um, take it away. I don't know where you want to start on either of the drivers, but this was not a Prema domination in F2. No, uh, they haven't really, like... I don't know. They're very hot and cold in F2, aren't they? They'll have some lukewarm years and then they'll be the best team out there. They were not the best team out there this year. That's for sure. Um, as for the drivers, start start with Halga first. Um, slow start. Some mistakes were creeping in, which you could expect out of a rookie, I guess. Can't be too harsh on him. Um, he began to find his feet gradually. There was some promise there. Um, you know, some good performances such as Monaco and Baku, for example. Uh, he was getting there ever so slowly, showing a bit more potential than um, than what Darivala was. You could argue that this is just my sort of perspective and why I'm seeing things here. I could see either argument. Um, next year with MP Motorsports, then what effectively is Drogovic's car. And knowing Hauger's track record of being nowhere one season and just coming back and Superman in the field, uh, you got to look at him as one of the title favorites next year, you know, potentially. Um, then you got to wonder where does that leave Red Bull? Because now you've got multiple candidates, but Marco's, Marco's mind changes so frequently. One minute he's saying Liam's not in the frame for a seat, the next one he's saying he is. One minute he's saying Isaac Hajar is the future of the team. And the next minute he's not talking about him at all. Um, and Hauger was sort of up and down, up and down with his opinion. It's like, where do you stand with these damn drivers, Marco? He seems to be sort of living in the moment. If Hauger can win F2 next year at just the right time, you never know. So... Uh, learning year for him for sure. It had some good moments. Would say it was not the perfect season though. As for Taravala, uh, underwhelming, and that's where I'm just going to leave it. Tyler, um, yeah, I know a lot of people watching will be very interested to hear your thoughts on Taravala. Josh summarized it perfectly with underwhelming. I don't think anyone could really argue with that. Not. Not what a lot of people would have hoped for, I think. A lot of people were thinking he went to Prima, could have been a title contender, a lot of experience under his belt. It didn't work out that way. No, not so. I think underwhelming is probably even an, un an understatement. I think um, he's a Red Bull junior who's had a couple of tests with McLaren. Um, and you don't know whether to put him in the category of is he sort of buying those tests or is he actually getting them on merit because of the fact that ultimately he is a Red Bull junior. He has won uh, sprint races and um, finally achieved his first feature race. I, by the way, I just love, I love, probably my favourite thing of, of the entire year, that the, the weekend that uh, Eurovips got his first um, win of the season and De Ruvula, uh got his first feature race uh, win of his F2 career was the same weekend that Drogovic clinched the title, meaning that neither of those things were at all covered. <laughs> Um, I had to write multiple pieces that Monza weekend about how good Dragovic was. And I did feel really bad for them too, because it just means that like even your best moment of your, of your season is just shadowed by someone else's greatness that could have been and should have been you. Um, Daruvala, who I keep calling Daruvala, so I apologise for the name switching, but he uh, was expected to be a champion this year, really, if he was going to make it to F1. I think that's over now. Uh, it's, again, interesting to see that he's supposed to be with MP again next year with Hauger. Interesting to see two 
mm. drivers both with Prima, <clears throat> who in the last two, three years have been by far dominant, have a really bad year and then switch to MP, who obviously had a really good year this year. So you don't really see that, especially from Prima to MP. So very odd. Um, I've got to be honest, I feel like my feelings about Derivada are pretty limited only on the basis that I think he's a good driver, but sort of similar uh, level as someone like Luca Giotto, someone who wins races, will give you a fight, will nick wins and podiums off of other drivers who maybe need it more than them in their career, but I don't think it will get him anywhere uh, in terms of F1. I think he's capable of it elsewhere. Following on with, from high tech in a way, two drivers possibly expected more, especially with the team they're in. Dennis Hauger, Josh, where do we where do we put this guy? F3 champion coming in, ends up finishing P10 in the standings. Once I stop fighting with my pop filter, I can give you an answer. Um, I'll say B minus. Tyler, um, for Hauger, actually, I, I, I'm not going to be too harsh on him. Uh, I saw enough to make me think that he can rebound back. Um, also, Framer this year, a really interesting thing to note is. Uh, two years previous to this, so 2020 and 2021, Prima won both the drivers and the team's titles for both those seasons. Coming to this one with an F3 champion and Daruvula, who's got so much experience and supposedly talent, they have this sort of season. Um, and the next year, they've got a really strong lineup. So it's like the better they do next year, the lower they are ranked now, really, because it will show that it might have been them and their struggle to adapt. Um, I'm going to say for Halger, I'm going to say B minus, I'm going to say. So that's two B minuses. I think that's pretty fair. Daruvala though, Tyler? C plus. Um, C plus. I, the consistency is the one thing that saved him from an otherwise very embarrassing year. And the last thing I have to say on him is the fact that um, he could have been a great hope for India. And ultimately, yes, he finished three places above his teammate in the standings, but it was only, what, 11 points, which in F2 terms is literally nothing. So I think, yeah, it's over for him. This was his chance. This was his year. It hasn't worked out for whatever reason. And I think C plus is the most I'm going to get for that. Josh? Yeah, don't know. Let's move on. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, let's move on. 